In this video, we're going to take our individual simulations, the top and the bottom, and we're going to combine them together in order that we can surface them. So if we just have a look at what we've got, at the moment we've been visualizing this particle fluid surface. And, um, and we can also visualize it down here as well. And this is not what we want, actually. What we want to do is combine the actual cache data here itself, because here we have all the data that we need. This is filtering out some stuff. If you notice, we don't have fields, but we do have the uh, surfaces and stuff. Here we've got the fields and the volumes and the part, and the, sorry, the, the fields and the uh, particles and stuff. So it's the caches that we need to combine together. So um, let's do that quickly. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, just pop out a couple of nulls. Let's put this one under that cache. Let's call this um, top. Let's just drag that null over here, plug this into the set cache, call this bottom. There we go, let's just drag these over here a little bit. So we've got some real estate. I'm actually gonna move the top nut over to the right here, and just color it yellow, because it's easy to spot. Just save the scene. There we go. So here we've got this uh, top cache, and here we've got the bottom cache. And if we look, as I said, mentioned before, um, this, because of the fluid compress node, this has um, compressed it down. Uh, our particles have been converted into pack primitives. Each one of these little boxes is a container of all the particles, and that's the pack primitive that's um, representing them. It's just to make it more efficient on disk. The other thing is we have these uh, volumes. So what I want to do, first of all, is split up particles from the volumes here. So to do that, we're just going to simply use a split node. Let's plug this down here. Let's turn on the split node. And uh, if we come up to the top here, we can, we see we've got the options here. So the flip fluid object is the object, is the uh, particles and stuff. And these are the fields. So if I choose a uh, flip fluid object, um, you'll see it splits it out into the uh, volume. Sorry, the flip fluid object is the actual volumes themselves. The rest would be the particles. So if I just pop a null here, you'll see here we've got our volumes. And out of the other side, we've got our particles, just the pack perimeters without the volumes. So the flip fluid object refers to the uh, volume data here. So we're going to call this um, volume. And we'll call this um, particles. So we can actually uh, just make a complete copy of those three nodes and just plug that in here. So now we've also got our um, volume coming out from this side and we've got the particles coming out from this side. Now, if you want to, um, we'll visualize them in a moment. So you can middle click and just check you've got the right data. So we split up the uh, points and the particles. Now it's easy to merge the particles together because you can just simply add a merge node just merge these guys together. Oh, that in there. And now we have all the particles joined together we want. There we go, just loading in different parts of the cache. Now, um, ah, here's a slight problem. <laughs> I'm running the top without the offset here. So if you remember, I'm actually plugging this into the time shift. So I need to plug the time shift into this top null. There we go. Now they join together properly. So yeah, don't forget to plug that time shift into the null of the top section here. So there we go. So now we've joined the particles together. I thought it looked a bit weird. So the uh, tricky bit comes to when we need to combine the volumes together. Because if you look at the volumes, we have uh, three volumes, surface, pressure, and velocity. But there's a slight issue here. The velocity field is a vector and the surface and pressure are floats. So what we need to do is uh, we need to combine them in slightly different ways. So what I need to do is, uh, we, well, we combine the scalars different to the uh, vectors. So a scalar is just a, a one value, whereas the vector is a set of three values. So I need to split those up again. So I'm gonna add a split here, and we're gonna split out the um, velocity field. Let's just uh, turn this on. So here we can now choose velocity. 
So I'm just going to um, select this null and we'll see we've got vel. So I'll call this um, vector so we know that's what we're merging. And then this side will be um, scalar. Doesn't really matter. But this is the other two fields, the surface and the pressure. And again, we need to do the same on this volume on the other side. Let's move the merged particles over to the side here. In fact, uh, let's put a null here so we can keep track of what's doing, what's happening. We'll call this uh, merged particles. Merged particles. There we go. Let's maybe color that one red so we know we've finished doing that bit. So here now I've split up my um, vel velocity there and there and my surface and pressure fields here and here. So, like I said, we need to combine these in slightly different ways. Um, um, and again, depending on the type of field to, to what we want to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's combine the um, vector fields. And for that, we could use a VDB uh, combine. So let's plug in the vector one and vector two. If we middle click, um, you'll see it's done a job of combining it, but um, we need to check that we've done this right. You don't need to specify these up here. I mean, you could do say velocity to velocity, but ultimately there is only one volume to combine. So this is combi combine them though. So we'll call this combine vel. Now it's important that you check um, what's happening because obviously we can't see what's happening here. And uh, it's not like you can see a volume in a spreadsheet. So we need to use the visualizers. So um, to visualize a scalar field, let's use a volume slice. So a volume slice allows you to take a slice out of a, out of a field, a vector field. So here we should specify which field we want to look at. Let's look at the surface field. The nice thing about this, you can move it the plane through it. Uh, you can change the dimension of the plane along the axis rather. And here you're visualizing in color, say we're visualizing in infrared, and you can check out the range here. So let's put minus one to plus one, minus 0.5 to plus 0.5, something like that. And you can see we've got a, a range of colors. If I put zero and we kind of clip it. So you can work out the range of numbers that you're dealing with. Um, we can also look at the pressure field. So there's a slightly different pressure field. So if you put the number up higher, we can see the pressures where the pressure is really quite high because it's in, in in the red colors there. So it's high in our fountain, and then when it's uh, pooling down. So here we can check out the uh, scalar at the bottom there. So we can visualize uh, what we're doing here. So how do we visualize the, the velocity field? If I plug it in here, we, we don't actually see anything, which is uh, fair enough because it's a vector field. So for a vector field, we uh, I'm going to use the volume slice anyway. Uh, let me get rid of the pressure. Uh, we do see the vol. That's because it wasn't finding it. It does map around the velocity field, but the problem is the velocity field is a vector, and this will only show one of the values. It might show the x, the y, or the z, or something else. So we use this in conjunction with a volume trail node. So the volume slice ideally is um, for viewing a scalar field, but I use it to help visualize uh, a vector field because. Um, I'll show you why actually. Let me just unplug that. I'm probably not making this clear. Let's so the one to visualize a vector field. Let's leave that hit there for a minute. The one to visualize a vector field is a volume trail because this will project trails along the velocity field, so we can see the swirls and the stuff it will create. But it needs two inputs. You put your velocity field on the right, but you need some points on the left. So I use a volume slice to create those points because the volume slice creates this grid with one point per voxel. And I know that's going through the volume and then that the, each one of these points now will be where the, the vector field will shoot out stream from. So if I turn that on now, you can see we get these streams in the direction of the velocity field based on where those little um, voxels are. If I template this, you can see there's one from each of the junctions there. So this gives us a quite an interesting display. There's quite a lot of points there. You could also just add a scatter node. So that's because a scatter node will also scatter in a volume and use that as your source points. So um, normally that scatters in a volume. Or maybe not in this case. 
So we could use the volume um, slice and then just scatter some points along the uh, plane just to simplify it. And this will make this draw quicker. So here I'm creating the volume slice so I know it's going to bisect that plane. I'm scattering a lot less points than the uh, points in the slicer. You'll see there's 107,000 points in the slice, but here we've only got 1,000. But it still gives you a good idea of what's happening with the velocity there. So um, you'll see there's a slight problem here, actually. So if I plug in the first velocity field, we see that one. But if I plug in the second one, we should be seeing this. If I look at the combine, we um, don't see the bottom section. Because um, what we're doing here, we're just copying A to B, uh, which is not what we want to do. Um, what we want to do is change the method here. Let's change this to maximum. And this is going to pull out the maximum value of both fields. Um, so when it combines the fields, whichever field's got the highest value is the one it's going to use. And because we've got zeros up here for the bottom one and zeros down here for the top one, it's just going to keep the highest values from both of them, which gives us the combine that we want. And you'll see now by visualizing it, I can see I've got the velocities correctly at the top coming down and then merging into the uh, bottom here. And we can move that slice along and check out different slices of the velocity throughout the sim, which is kind of nice. On the volume trail as well, actually, you can bring down the trail length if it's um, too long for you, so you get a, a, a much shorter idea of what's going on. You can add more points, obviously, if you want. So here, by using the visualizer, I've checked and made sure that I'm doing the maths correctly, essentially. So now I know that my combined velocity field is working. Hurrah. So let's now combine the surface fields. So um, again, I'm going to use another split. So here, let's split out the surface field. Let's just, um, actually, let's put a null after this uh, combine and call this um, vel um, or merged vel. So we've got a merged vel. Let's color that one red. So here we'll call this a uh, surface. So if you have a look, we split out the surface field and then out of this null, um, this will be the pressure. Let's call this pressure. It's got that wrong. There you go, pressure. And um, we want to, again, steal that for this second scalar. So here again, we've got the other surface and the other pressure. Just to check. Good. So let's again use a VDB combine and combine the surface fields. So again, let's just grab this volume slice and have a look what we've got. We don't seem to see anything. Let's put the value back to one. Oh, there you go. Now we begin to see something. Now, again, we're missing the bottom here. Now, a surface field is what we call a sign, um, uh, a, a sign distance field. So it's a special kind of data um, giving us a number that's increasing. So it's zero, basically, here, the surface. And then we get positive numbers outside the mesh and negative numbers um, inside the mesh so, and zero at the surface. So um, if we just put um, something like 0 0.1 and 0 0.1, we can start to see those values. If I just bring down the zeros, you can see we've got uh, numbers below zero inside and then numbers outside zero outside the mesh. And then anything that doesn't have the voxels is just sort of a, a very large number of distance. So it's the distance from the surface. This is, uh, um, allows us to do some very clever stuff. So these are called sign distance fields. So instead of doing cop um, copy here, we don't want to copy one to the other. We just want to do an SDF union, a sign distance field union. So um, that would be the correct way to do it. And look, as soon as we do that, you'll see we now get the bottom section added in as well, which is kind of what we want there. So again, um, that's all very good. Um, there's another way we can preview the surface, actually, and that's with a uh, primitive node. So if we create a primitive properties node, this is quite an old school node. This allows you to view uh, different properties of various primitives. Now, the volume itself, the surface field, is a primitive. 
So if we go to the volumes tab, here we can change the visualization of this volume. So for example, I can uh, adjust the visualization. Let's choose the surface field here. And we can display it as um, the smoke. That's not really doing very good. Let's display it as an ISO surface. If we display it as the ISO surface here, what that's doing is generating the geometry where the zero values are in the sine distance field. So that's where the surface is supposed to be. And it gives you a preview of what that mesh might look like. So again, we can see that this is um, joining together quite nicely. And um, have we got that splashy one turned on? Let me just check. Version two. No, that's the uh, not splashy solver. That's the swirly one. But here we can get a good idea of what that surface might look like. So you can either take a 2D slice through it, or you can actually, with the DSDF, you can visualize the um, surface itself here, which is kind of nice. So let's pop another null in here, call this merged um, surface. So remember, you want to do that from the volumes themselves here, not from the, just the visualizers. Let's just put these visualizers over there, over, out way a bit. And then last but not least, we want to combine our pressure fields. And again, let's use the VDB combine. So the pressure field is not an SDF and it's not a vector. So this one, we can very simply just add one value to the other. And again, let's grab a volume slice and preview our pressure field. And here we can see we've added the two pressures together. Let's set this back to zero pressure. And let's put this to, I think that's quite a high pressure. We can start to see <laughs> where the values are. So yeah, it's very, so values about 400 where it's red. I quite like visualizing the pressure at the top of the fountain there, which is quite nice. And there's very little pressure where it's just falling down here, which is good. So there you go. We've combined, uh, interestingly, we've learned there's three different types of um, volume. Uh, Data-wise, there's two types, there's a scalar and a vector. So this is one number, this is a three. But in the scalars, there's a special type of volume called a sign distance field, which is what the surface is. And that's different to just a normal um, field just with some data in it. Because the sign distance field tells us the distance from the surface, uh, which is quite handy. So we have to combine things um, in a slightly different way for each of those fields. So let me just do this last one and call this merged uh, pressure. And we've got our little visualizers everywhere. Maybe I'll color the visualizers purple because they're confusing me about what their um, function is. There we go. So make it a bit darker. Wow. So that's combining all of those fields together. Um, so what we can do now is just add a simply add a merge node and then merge back those four nulls. So the three fields and the particles back into our combined mesh here and you'll see we've got our primitives we've got all the correct attributes and we've got a uh, velocity surface and pressure and stuff like that going on in there which is all good and um, all the fields with the same resolution you should keep them all of the same res so if you are breaking it down both of these should be the same resolution so up here and the same grid size as well remember it's the grid size that's important there Otherwise, you might get errors when you start combining them together here. So there you go. We've got them all combined. Uh, so what I might do now, just for speed, is just write this out. So let's do a file cache. And we'll call this file cache uh, combined um, cache. Combined cache. There we go. So we only want 200 frames of this, really, because we've... Um, had that 50 frame offset at the beginning. So here, let's just save this to disk in background. And then what I'll do is um, I will stop the video. And uh, what we'll do is we'll carry on the, uh, in the next video, we will surface up, um, talk about surfacing up these caches.